Hey, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to talk about iOS ActionScript mobile projects in Flash Builder 4.5. So, you've got Flash Builder 4.5 installed. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and choose File, and then choose New, and we want ActionScript mobile project. For this one, we want to go ahead and give it a name. Let's, uh, for this example, I want to call this Simple Multi-Touch. And for the project, we'll use the multi-touch API for Air 2.6. This applies to any of the devices. It'll work on Android, Playbook, or iOS. Go ahead and click Next. For this, we're just going to uncheck these. For now, we just want to choose Apple iOS. And let's go ahead and set platform settings. We want target devices to be iPad. Now, for this one, we don't want it to automatically reorient, but we do want full screen. So again, these settings, you can modify them. Basically, auto reorient means when you go from portrait to landscape, you'll get an event and then you can adjust the content accordingly. We're going to keep it in landscape. We're not going to worry about it. And then select full screen. Go ahead and choose finish. and it brings up our project and it brings us into the ActionScript file. Now over here notice we have our AS file and then we have our app XML file. For this example let's go ahead and we're going to create a couple of things based on the multi-touch API. Now whenever you're working with a an API we want to code to what the device supports. You could um, do things to check to, to identify what type of device it is and what operating system it's running, things like that. But I would uh, generalize a little bit more to specifically what the API is you want to use. So we want to use multi-touch. And so uh, if I go ahead and create a statement, an if statement, so I'll just say if, and then we want multi-touch Go ahead and press control space and it'll give us the code hinting. We want multi-touch dot and then supports touch events. That's what we're looking for. If it supports touch events, then we know we can do work with multi-touch. So we'll say if it does, then we're going to call an init function. Else uh, we want to handle it differently. Now you can handle it however you want. For our purposes, I'm just going to trace out uh, no multi-touch support, just kind of for debugging purposes. Now, again, we have the multi-touch API, and we're checking to see if it supports touch events. And if it doesn't, we want to behave differently. So I would get used to this. I would get used to identifying, OK, if I want to use a certain mobile API, I want to check whether this device supports it. I don't really care if the device is an Android phone or if it's an iPad an iPad or an iPod touch or or whichever I just want to know if it has multi-touch support maybe it's on um, a touchscreen TV or a touchscreen monitor uh, so that you can interact with it that way so there's a lot of options but we always want to know if it supports this API let's do something all right let's come down here below our constructor function and let's create a private function init and it's not going to return anything Voy, voir, voir. I don't know what that is anyway so at this point we want to set up some uh, we want to listen for some events and we want to specifically uh, set up our multi-touch to handle touch events and to do that we call the multi-touch class again Dot, and we want to set the input mode. So choose input mode equals, and then the class is multi touch input mode, which we kind of saw earlier. Dot, and we want to set it for touch point. Now, this is very important. When you are working with multi touch input, you need to set the input mode. Otherwise, you won't receive or uh, register for specific events. You want to get touch events, then you need to listen for the touch point. If you want to get gesture events, you listen to gesture. 
Now you have to do those separately. You can't do both at the same time. You can certainly change the input mode. So for example, if part of your app, you wanna work with touch points and then other parts you wanna work with gestures, you can certainly switch that. So for now we want this to be touch points. So go ahead and set that. Now let's create a few uh, events we're gonna listen for. And so since we're dealing with ActionScript only, project we're going to reference the stage so we're going to say this dot stage dot add event listener and we want touch event and we want the touch event begin so notice how that sets up and then we want to say handle touch events okay let's go ahead and add one more event that we're listening for this is also a touch event but this one is going to be the touch event end and then we're going to say handle touch events so what do we have we're listening for two events now these warnings are saying hey I don't see no thing with the stuff I don't see no touch events method and I'm just saying hey hold your horses we're getting there let's go ahead and create it just for the sake of getting it in there handle whoops touch events and this will receive an event we'll cap well let's uh, set this to we'll type this as a touch event all right so we've got these two event listeners we're going to listen for when the touch begins and then when it ends so basically when the finger touches the screen and when you move around and then when you lift off we want to know when it ends all right at this point we're going to handle the touch events and we're going to listen for these and at the moment i'm just going to set this up in a simple way i'm going to say if event dot type equals uh touch begin this is the uh, string literal for the touch begin event the string value if it's that then I want to do something and what we're going to do is I want to draw a circle on the stage at the point on which you touch uh, the screen so to do that uh, we're going to create an object and it's going to be a sprite object and what I'm going to do is set up some variables and the first variable is going to be a uh, spot. We'll just call them spot, which is a sprite. All right. And the reason for that is I want to be able to register that spot when we have a touch begin. And I want to add it to the stage, create an object, add it to the stage. And then when we have a touch end, I want to, I want to remove that. And so I put the variable up here so I can access it within my if statements. And I'll say else... And there we go. Now, at this point, we need to create an object. So uh, I want to create another function that I can call that will return a sprite. And I'm going to return basically a filled in circle. And that function, we're going to call it get circle. <clears throat> so down here, we're going to say private function. I realize you can't see that very well because this screen size, yeah, that'll help us a little bit. So we're going to say get circle, and in this one we're going to, we can pass in a variable. For this we can call it circ, meaning circumference, which is a uint unsigned integer, because we always want it to be a positive number. We, we're going to set this to a default so that um, if you don't pass anything into it, you'll just get a default of 60, uh, and then it's going to return a sprite. All right, now within this we're just going to call the drawing API uh, it's fairly straightforward and <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna say var spot which is a sprite equals new sprite whoops man my spelling is off today all right and now we're going to say sprite and we're gonna reference the graphics object we're gonna say graphics dot begin fill 
Now, what we're doing is we're setting up um, the color and the begin fill method is going to take a color. Whoops. <laughs> Someone's looking at me going, Brand, what are you doing? I meant Sprite, Spot, Sprite. It's all the same thing. Okay. I got ahead of myself. Sprite. I got Sprite on the brain. You remember those 7-Up commercials? Anyway, okay. So we say Spot, we're referencing the graphics. No wonder it wasn't giving me code hinting. Brent, you messed up. Okay, so at this point, uh, we want it to do, we're going to begin fill, we're going to pass in a color. And this color, I want it to be a random color. And so I'm going to say math.random. And then I'm going to times it by a hex number. And let's just go with a uh, solid white, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that'll be solid white. So it's going to be giving me a color uh, based off a random number. Okay. Now below that, uh, at this point, we now want to set up, you know, the object. What are we, what are we drawing? And so we're going to say spot dot graphics dot, and we're going to do a draw circle. Now, draw circle. We have uh, an x and a y value. We're not going to worry about. And then we have a radius, and this is where the circumference comes in. And that's where that is. All right, now. We've just created a sprite and we've drawn a circle. Now we're going to return spot, all right, which is a sprite. Now back up here <clears throat> within our function, so we've set this up and we have a touch begin. We're going to create uh, a circle. So I'm going to say spot equals get circle, all right? Now at this point, um, I'm going to set up the touch events and I'm also going to set up the location of this circle. So when you touch we have a touch event and we're going to get some information from that event. So I'm going to set up for example the um, X coordinate and it's going to equal the event and the stage X value. So it's going to return where that point is I'm going to get the X value. Same thing for the Y value. So I get event.stage Y. So that's going to hand in that. So that'll place the circle there. The other thing I want to do is set the... Uh, you, you're familiar with movie clips and sprites where you can set start drag and stop drag. Um, we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to do uh, what we call a start touch drag. So at this point we're going to say spot.start touch drag. Notice this right here. Now what we need is to set its touch point ID and this is something that's very important to understand with multi-touch. Multi-touch and touch points, whenever you create a touch point, it, re it returns a unique touch point ID and that touch point ID you then reference throughout while the uh, while that touch is still live, that touch point is still valid you can reference that ID and then you can say, okay, where is this point and where is this point? In other words, you can have multiple fingers touching the screen and they can, and you can track the location of those touch points based on the touch points. And it's the touch point ID. Now I said a whole bunch of stuff and hopefully that makes sense. We're going to pass in the, <clears throat> the event has it has the touch point ID. And then we say lock center. I want to say true because I want the object to be centered on the touch location. All right, I know this is a lot, but we'll get this code in and then when we run it on the device, it'll all make sense. And you'll be like, it's a miracle. And then I'll be like, you're welcome. Okay, so at this point, uh, we just need to add it to the stage and we say this dot stage dot add child and we're going to add spot. All right, now one more thing, and that is how do we know when we release the touch point, when we release the, if we have more than one finger on the screen, how do we know which one uh, we released? Well, the way, one way is to keep an array of touch point objects. And so we need to create a variable, and I want to create it as a 
class variable, so I'll set it up here, private var, and we're going to call this spots. <laughs> I'm real good, aren't I? Real, real obvious. Go. So, real simple stuff. So we have the spots array. Now, when we go ahead in our init function, let's go ahead and initialize this to a um, equals, we're just going to make it an empty array. Okay, very simple, just for the sake of making sure that it's been created. Now, at this point, we need to add the spot reference to the uh, object, to the array. So, we're going to say this.spots, and then I'm going to, I want to do a uh, relation, what do they call that, what do they call that, what do they call that, uh, you know what I'm saying, an array, an array. Relational array. What am I trying to say? Yeah, someone knows it. You know what I'm talking about. Instead of a indexed array, I want to do a. Why can't I remember that? Anyway, someone will comment about it and say, "Brent, figure it out." All right. And the way, what I'm saying is, I want to reference the touch point ID that we've got and associate it, tie it to the actual spot object so that I can then reference sport. <laughs> Sorry, maybe I shouldn't do these so late at night. It's not that late. It's only like 9.30. Okay. All right, so let's review what's happened. We've got our events. We've got a spot that we've created. We've set it to the stage X and Y of that event. We've created a start, touch, drag method. We called it so that when this event, this touch point is moving, it's uh, it's going to react to it. It's going to basically drag. It's going to follow that point. So wherever that point ID goes, it's going to follow it. Now, in order for us to remove and also to work with the spot in relation to other touch points, we need to track them. So we're going to keep them in an array, a spots array. So we pass in the ID and we reference the actual sprite that we get. Now, I'm going to go through all the code and then in the next tutorial we will actually build this and it will make sense once we build it. So at this point, remember if it's a touch begin, then if it's not, the only other option is touch end. Now, this is one way to do it. You can certainly set this up. You could have multiple functions to handle the different events. Either way, I, I tend to group them together like this where I just have a statement or switch statements to handle the different event types. Okay, basically when you're done, what we want to do is take sport. Oh, I'll tell you what. Notice I have this uh, local variable that's local to this function and I want to now say, okay, give me the event, uh, the current spot in the spots array and so I'm going to say this dot spots and guess what we're going to call it event dot touch point ID right so that's the associative array right is that what it is man I'm going to kick myself because I can't remember that anyway here's the number this is the value so I'm going to pull that sprite back out of there so that I can then uh, reference it and remove it. So at this point we're going to say stage dot remove child and we're going to say spot, right? So we've identified which one has just been, what event has just finished and then also the next thing we want to do is we want to remove it from the uh, array. So we say spots and then we say event dot touch point. It's just a roundabout way to uh, remove our stuff as it were all right there's the code and if it doesn't make sense hopefully it'll make sense when we go to build this but in the next tutorial we're going to build it and run it on an ipad this will apply to an iphone if you have an iphone or ipod touch uh, but the principles will be uh, the same all right see you in the next tutorial